Hey, YouTube, stand back at you again. Um, I'm going to get into this story, um, and it comes straight out of Virginia, Fairfax County, uh, Virginia, which is about maybe 15, 20 minutes up, the, up Route 1 or maybe like 10 minutes up 95 uh, north, you'll be in Fairfax County. But this story come, uh, happened, um, I want to say early this year, but anyway, I'm going to read into it. Teen not fit for trial and killing of ex's parent. I'm going to let that sit, sit with you for a second, and I'm going to read on into this. A teen charged with killing his ex-girlfriend's parents in December remains incompetent to stand trial, a judge ruled Wednesday in Fairfax County. Hold up a minute. So you telling me, okay, this girl and this guy was dating. The parents didn't, I don't think the parents wanted the girl even dating the boy. The parents didn't like the boy. So she made him break up or whatever, made her break up with him, whatever, didn't like it, whatever the case may be. And he got pissed off. So anyway, he kills the parents. Now, he was 17 when he did it. He was 17 when he did it. They was going to charge his ass as an adult. But now he's too, he's not competent to stand trial. But he was competent enough to go over there and kill him. See, this is where I'm saying, what? why do certain people get caught up in the loophole but had that been of another race, trust me, it wouldn't have been no not competent to stand trial. Come on, we all know this. Anyway, I, I don't have to get into it. Y'all already know. Somebody done said it. Yep, you already know. Anyway, let's continue. Now, the now 18-year-old was charged as a juvenile with the killings of Buckley Cun Fricker. Hmm. 43, and Scott Fricker, 48, in Reston. The teen, sh the, the teen shot himself in the head after the attacks in which he is accused and was hospitalized before his eventual transfer to juvenile detention center. So he tried to kill himself after he killed them. Now, he, he, obviously he didn't harm the ex-girlfriend. I guess she wasn't the culprit. I guess the parents were the one. The parents were the evil ones to keep their daughter away from him. And if he was crazy enough to kill her parents, they saw what she didn't see. And a lot of times, people don't understand. People can see stuff that you don't see because we blinded by this thing called love. And I'm gonna tell you, love can be a dangerous thing. I'm telling you, love. Love can either kill you. Love can make you. Love can break you. Love can just lull you to sleep if that's what you want but at the same time i mean the parents saw something in this boy that she didn't and they was like no nah, he's not good for you he probably was controlling probably was possessive and all that other stuff because she was spending too much time with him she was too wrapped up in him and that's what he won't and he killed these people but now he's not competent to stand trial but he was competent enough to kill him and then turn around and kill himself because he knew if he didn't kill himself, he could be facing life in prison, if not the death penalty. But so then he, he shot himself. Obviously, he did. He was too damn scared to even kill himself right. So now he does, he playing crazy. But he went crazy when he went and did it. See, this is what I'm saying. These kids ain't got no problem with killing adults. These kids ain't got no problem with killing adults. They don't. They already don't show the elderly no respect. Cussing and spitting and all this stuff right in front of the elderly. You be looking at them like, man, listen, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not your parent. But please show these older people some respect, man. Please. Just show them some respect. I'm not telling you what to do, but just please. And I'm going to tell you, some of y'all might need to share this video which is with your crazy ass nieces and nephews and aunties and uncles and cousins and stuff like that. They be doing all that stuff in front of these elderly people. Do you realize that the sacrifices some of these elderly people made so that you can do what you're doing right now?
And a lot of y'all, they ain't did nothing for me. Guess what? If it wasn't for these elderly people standing up and going out here so you could vote, your ass wouldn't be able to vote. You'd still be doing some bullshit job and, and answering to these crazy people the way they was 50, 60 years ago. And if you think that's a long time, trust me, they ain't ask somebody that's 50, 60 years old. We just getting the right to damn vote 60, not even 100 years ago. Hell, it ain't 100 years ago. Might be 60. And I doubt that. The right to vote. We count as a human being. Because for years, we did not, we weren't even considered human. We weren't even considered a, a, a woman or a man. Despite we could do everything that they could do. Plus more, because trust me, we did a whole lot of shit that they didn't do and they don't do now. But anyway, I digress. Like I said, <clears throat> this boy was confident enough and he was sane enough to go to that house, kill them people in their own home. And then turn around and turn the gun on himself. It was premeditated. He knew what he was going to do before he got over there. And he's playing this crazy insanity shit so he can get off and plead. And, and then in about 10, 50, in, in about in less than 10 years, he'd be going home so he could do it again to somebody else. For real? Okay. Y'all setting yourselves up. But see, he needs help. Had that been another way, trust me, it wouldn't have been no help. Yeah, we're going to help you, but we're going to put you in prison while we're helping you. We, we're going to tell you we're going to reform you and rehabilitate you, but in all in all, we're just going to make you a, a more of an animal than what you already are. But they got a loophole, as they always do. But anyway... That's all I got on that story. I mean, it's just some bullshit. But like I said, y'all better watch these kids. These kids ain't trying to play. They, they allow, first of all, how does a, a, no child has no business with no gun, first of all. I used to get on my sister and my brother-in-law, well, my ex-brother-in-law now. I used to get on them all the time by getting guns to my nephew. Stop buying that boy BB gun. Stop buying that boy guns all the time. Not, not that my nephew is a bad kid. God knows. Uh, I mean, I love my nephew to death. You know what I'm saying? He's a barber and he's damn good. If y'all want to go to a good barber, or y'all get here in the Virginia area, <clears throat> especially down in Richmond, y'all go to this barber shop, Ref Refuge for Men, and ask for Rayshon or Ray. I'm gonna tell you, he will hook you up. I ain't bragging. But then again, yeah, I'm bragging. That's my nephew. The boy is bad. The boy is bad. I'm not I'm not bragging on him. I'm going to tell you right now, I will go if I don't see my nephew. And even though he's in Richmond two hours away, he got his life. He's about to get married. I got my life. I'm doing my thing. We don't get to see each other that often. But um, let me tell you something. I don't trust no barber or really no hairstylist. It's one stylist that I found in D.C that I will trust to cut my hair. Anybody else, y'all can kick rocks. I'm going to tell you right now, no. I will go six months, eight months, and don't get my hair cut, trimmed, or nothing unless I'm getting it from my nephew. That's real talk. My brother lives in New Jersey. My brother ended up shaving his beard off because he couldn't find nobody up there to shave his beard off. I'm telling you, not the way my nephew does it. I'm, I'm I'm not bragging on the man. I'm not bragging on the man. I know I don't went a whole left left field with that, but I mean I had to throw it out there. I mean he's damn good. The 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 barber shop is called Refuge for Men, and it's in Richmond. And ask for Ray or Ray Sean. The boy is bad. The boy is bad. Anyway, th that's all I gotta say about that. Um. And I, I didn't mean to deviate uh, from the uh, video, but <clears throat> this young man right here um, is like I said, these young kids ain't playing. Stop giving access, giving gun access to these kids. 
You got these little young kids accidentally shooting their little brother and sister or shooting themselves and all that shit because y'all got guns strolled all over the house. I ain't got them locked up. And, I mean, you got them in hand reach. I get that. But when you got little kids, you can't have none of that. All that got to be at the top. All of it, it, it listen, on top of the shelf, it got to be somewhere where can't nobody reach it but an adult or somebody of their height. And really then you don't want no teenager to know where your gun at. You just don't. But anyway, it's like I said, this boy is going to get up. He's going to be out in the street in about five to seven years. He's going to play crazy long enough for them to kind of where he can ease under the radar. Once he ease under that radar, he's going to be back in the street. Five years max. I guarantee you they're going to say, oh, well, he's fit um, to go back out into society. Say, well, okay, well, if he's fit to go back into society, then let's go ahead on and bring this trial up on up then. But see, if he know that, he ain't going to ever stop being crazy. But I digress. But anyway, that's all I got. And it's sad that this family, this young girl lost her parents dealing with a knucklehead. And sometimes your parents know, know more than you and you don't want to listen to them. <clears throat> it's hard to listen to your parents when they always telling you stuff you don't want to hear. But that's just being a parent. If you love your child you love, or you love your children, you're going to tell them the truth. They not going to like it. But it is the truth. The truth is not meant to always be smiling and a bed of roses and all that other shit. The truth can be ugly, it can be hard, and it can be damn sure unfair. But that does not mean we still need to not tell the truth. And if you tell your children, listen, baby, he's not a good fit for you. That, that guy's no good. I've had to do it with my daughter. Um, baby, he ain't the one for you. No, no. Trust me, mama sees something that you don't see. Right now, you got these on. You got blinders on, baby. You can't see what's around that corner. Mama is standing back. I can see around the corner and the side. One thing about parents, especially mothers, if you are into your children and you love your children, it ain't nothing that child going to say or do that's going to make you change your mind. You know your children. You know your child. You know if you are into your child or your children and you give them that time, that attention, and that love that they deserve and that they want, you're going to know anything that, that goes off with that child, you're going to pick up on it immediately. Ask my daughter. She'll tell you. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. What's wrong? Talk to me. What's up? Y'all better start talking to your kids and stop being their fucking friend. Stop being your child's friend. They, they are not meant to be your friend. They are meant to be your child for a reason. They are your child. They are your child or your children. You are to raise them, to teach them. You got these, man, let, let me tell you something else about this, and then I'm going to go ahead on and cut this video on off, I promise you. <clears throat> when I see videos on Facebook where you got the mother that's about, nine, about 19 to maybe 22 years old, and she got her child between 1 and 5 out there twerking, cussing, and she sitting back like, she out there geeking. I'm like, what is, I'm like, you know what? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Can't nobody tell this mama nothing. That's why that child doing what she doing and she talking the way she talking. And then when the child get in trouble at school, she's the type of parent that will go down to the school and be ready to fight the teacher because the teacher says something to the child. No, no. Teach your child some damn discipline and then you bring her back. But until then, she could not come in my class. Well, she won't be in my class. Now, you want to blame me for her acting out. Now, you need to take a hard look and think about that. So you're going to blame somebody else for your child acting out when I'm trying to tell her to do what she need to do. And she's going to tell me, I ain't doing shit. You can kiss my ass. Don't think these little kids ain't cussing these teachers out. And y'all got the nerve to want to underpay them. Every teacher should get nothing less than a hundred grand a year off the break. You you are with somebody else's child or ch you are with somebody else's children for anywhere from six to eight hours out the day. That's not including the lesson plans you got to do at home, grading the papers at home and all this other shit. Your job is more than eight hours. Your job is like 12 to 15 hours. It ain't but 24 in a day.
some teachers buying their own school supplies. But anyway, that I, I don't went on somewhere else. But anyway, it's like I said. Y'all better talk to these kids and stop being their damn friend. Because had the parents really known their, their, their son, their son would not have went over there and killed that girl's parents. People don't pay attention to their kids no more. They too busy being their friend, everybody in their damn phone, everybody just doing other shit other than communicating and talking. But anyway, that's all I got. Y'all have a good evening.